In this video, we will create an array of objects. In the previous video, I went into the details of what makes up object-oriented programming paradigm. We talked about what is object-oriented programming, how to create a class, how to create an object, and we also modified a bouncing ball program from a procedural programming paradigm to an object-oriented programming paradigm. If you watch that video to the end, you might have a question, hey Pat, it seems like object-oriented programming is actually quite complicated and longer and not really sure why we will use that instead of what we did with procedural programming. But the reason is because you haven't seen the power of object-oriented programming yet and the power in which it could encapsulate data and functions within a specific object. Let's say under procedural programming, if you want to draw 10 circles, how would you approach that problem? You can probably do it in two ways. The first way is that you create four sets of arrays. The first array contains X locations of the 10 circles. The second array contains Y location. The third array contains DX information, which is the direction and the speed in the horizontal axis. And then the fourth array contains the DY information, which is the speed and direction of the vertical axis. And then how you would access those information is by referencing the index location of that piece of information. But this way is a little bit problematic because what if by accident you change the size of the array, and then now the index location doesn't match. You might be accessing information inaccurately. Alternatively, what you can do is that, hey, what about I create 10 arrays that contains information specific to that circle, x, y, dx, dy. And this is not the most efficient way for two reasons. First, you need to create 10 arrays for 10 circles. And the second is because you can only contain information related to data, right? x, y, and dx, dy, which is what? Which is similar to how you would want to store data within an object anyway. But under object-oriented programming, what you can do is that you can not only store those data, but you can store functionalities specific to that object. And instead of having to create 10 arrays, you can create just one array with 10 objects. So this example that we have created before, we only have one circle that bounces around. So first, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create an array. An array is going to be called balls. And I'm going to comment out all of these first. Next, what I want to do is that I want to create 10 new objects inside my array balls. And I can do that using a for loop. 10 objects, right? So we have condition that say i less than 10. And then we just populate the object by doing this. And instead of just hard coding the number 200 comma 200, I am going to give it a random starting location. Random between zero and width, and random between zero and height. So now the initial location of 10 of the balls are going to be randomly spaced out between the width and the height of my canvas. And then I'm going to delete this. Now for calling functions, what I need to do is that I need to create another for loop. And now instead of just calling the object by its own name, I need to tell it which of the object within this balls array am I trying to call the function. And I can do that by doing balls and then I, right? This is how we access an object within an array. And then we just put the word dot and then we just put the name of the functions just like we did before. And now I'm going to delete this. Let's play. There you go. And now we have 10 objects that start randomly within the canvas, but it has the initial dx and dy that are the same, which is 2 and 3. That's why it kind of moves in the same direction. The second example that I'm going to show you is similar to this, but instead of creating 10 objects right at the beginning, I want to create an object when I click on the canvas. And I can use a function called mouse pressed, which is a built-in function within P5.js that is called when you press your mouse on the canvas. 
So what you need is the function mouse pressed. And then what I want to do is that I want to use the function push. This function adds a value into an array, right? And this is the name of my array, balls. And what am I adding? I'm adding a new object. At which location? At mouse x location and mouse y location. So mouse x and mouse y are built-in variables that has a value of where the mouse x and mouse y is being clicked. So now I'm going to delete this part. And if you click run, it will give you an error because what? Because there are no circle right now, right? So instead of hard coding the number 10 here, I want to give the size of that array, right? So right now, if I click run, it doesn't give an error because the size on an array is still zero. So it's actually is not doing anything. But now if I click on here, now I'm creating circle objects based on where I click my mouse. So this is yet another advantage of using object-oriented programming, where you can create multiple objects within your program where each of the object has its own data and functionality encapsulated within its own object.